How's it going? This is James Tranley, or James underscore films, as you may know me, from my Dreamscape 3D renders. And this is part two of the series I'm putting together with NVIDIA, going over the USD file format. This is a fantastic way to collaboratively edit on 3D files across different software. For today, we're going to be focusing on designing a scene in Blender, kind of building out from this base scene that you see I have here setting up some elements, getting things looking decent and getting it pa packaged in the USD format and sent over for Unreal Engine. The next part after this will actually be in Unreal Engine, fitting this into a scene and getting it ready for a beautiful final render. So first of all, let me just talk about the use case for USD in particular. You might have used file formats like OBJ or FBX, for example. So say, for example, I wanted to export everything in my scene here out to Unreal Engine or Cinema 4D or any other 3D software. I would select the objects that I want to render out or export out. I would go to File, down to Export, and you've got a number of options that you can select here in Blender. Typically, you would go with something like an FBX or an OBJ. But the issues with these file types is that once you export them out, that's how it is. It's locked into that format. Instead, we're actually gonna be using the USD or the Universal Scene Description format to send our files over to Unreal Engine. And send is an interesting way to describing this because in all honesty, what you're doing is actually still having this as a living file, if you will. So once you move it over to Unreal Engine, you can actually go back into Blender and just update anything in the file and it will automatically update in Unreal Engine as long as you save it once again to that same USD file format. So this will make a bit more sense in a bit. So for example, what if I was to, you know, have this default cube here and add it into my scene and I wanted to, you know, I don't know, bring this in and set this up and then add that out and then actually export just this over as a USD. So if I was to go to export USD, let me just select only that object. I don't want anything else here. I'm just going to call this default uh, cube test. And let's actually just export this as a USD just to show you how this works. So you notice I have my content browser here, but I also have this USD stage editor. And you might not see this if you're initially in here because you actually need to go to edit and plugins and search for uh, USD and you want to hit USD importer. I've already done this, but if you haven't already, just check this on and it will have you restart Unreal Engine uh, for it to take effect and to show up in your UE5. Uh, so I already have this set up, like I said, so now I can just go right over to my USD stage editor. I'm over here in my level in Unreal Engine. I've got the USD stage editor up. If you don't see this, you can go to window and then USD stage editor. And I just like to pin it here. So I have it here already. What I can do now is actually hit file and open. And then let's open up that default cube from before. Uh, save selected, that's fine. Bring that in, and there is my default cube in Blender. Looks, or in Unreal Engine, rather. It looks great. So let me actually make some edits to this in Blender. I realized, you know what? I think these edges are a little bit too sharp. Let me bevel them and add a little bit of subdivision here. Let me just, you know, maybe select all these two here. Let's just select this edge, rather. This edge loop here, and let's give that a bevel too. I think that looks pretty cool. <laughs> so let's save this once again, just instead of, you know, having exported out as a OBJ or whatever, you can just basically save this out again as if you're saving your project. So let me just save this once again as a USD, just overriding that change. And then if I go back to Unreal Engine, there's our object here. If I hit file uh, with that object selected, I want to have that default cube selected, file reload. And there we go. You can see our bevel has been added in now. If I bring this over, you can actually see a little bit closer up. Oops, as I throw it away to the abyss. <laughs> there it is. You can see our bevel is on our default cube. So you can play around with this here. And this is now a living object in your scene, this USD for file. Okay, so let's actually go into our scene and kind of move things around here and get it set up for export to Unreal Engine. So Unreal Engine is a really fantastic software. I like to use it a lot to design uh, really cool scenes, but in all honesty, I start a lot of my scenes here in Blender just for the ease of modeling things, moving stuff around, and then kind of use almost Unreal Engine as like my stage. Uh, so I have a lot of objects. If I go over back over to this Unreal Engine uh, page here and go to my content browser, you see I've got a lot of these static meshes, you know, different trees or rocks or different things I've modeled like, you know, archways or whatever. 
that I can easily bring into my scene and then kind of move around and stage them on top of each other. I'm not doing any modeling in Unreal Engine. It's just kind of the final place of putting all these things together to really make a very cool final scene. Adding in the nice lighting, you can see I just turned that one environmental light off. You can see I've got really beautiful lighting here and adding in some nice subtle animation to things like trees or plants that really just bring the scene to life. Maybe some flickering lights and whatnot and you get a great final piece. But again, I'm really just staging stuff here. I'm not doing any modeling. So if I wanna actually create any objects or anything, I usually do this over in Blender. And so for this particular scene that you see right here, these archways and all these things are a lot of different models I got from Sketchfab. Some of these rocks are other things that are photo scanned from things that I've done or from other models and things like that. So I like to kind of move these around and often just model my own pieces. So this scene does not have to be perfect by any means because I'm going to be, you know, kind of patching up some of the holes like this over in Unreal Engine potentially, but I like to start with a pretty good base to work with and actually have kind of a decent starting place for when I go into Unreal Engine. So uh, I have like all these rocks and things around here. Let me actually just add in a plane below this just to kind of block out that bottom part just so I know where this is going to be. In that Unreal Engine scene, I kind of want this to be on that little cove, that little beach here at the bottom here, this like little area here. I want this kind of rocky, you know, little beach archway kind of thing there. So if I go back over to Blender, you can see this is gonna effectively be my beach here. Um, so let's kind of model this out a little bit. I'm just gonna stretch this out a little bit more and kind of pull this up a bit. And so this is kind of our coastline here. And so let me actually give this some geometry to work with. Let's give it like a hundred subdivisions. Um, and then actually we can go in here and start to kind of model this a bit. And this is something that's a little bit trickier to do in Unreal Engine, not impossible, but I just prefer the tools for modeling in Blender a bit more. So if I go over to Sculpt Mode with my plane selected, I'd like to use typically the blob brush. Uh, to scale up your brush, you can hit F on your keyboard and then move your mouse to the right to scale it up or move it to the left to pull it down. I'll be doing this quite a bit, so you'll just see that kind of moving up or moving down. And to change the fall off of your brush, you hit Shift F and it gives you this fall off curve. It defaults around 0.5. Uh, you can move up to have uh, just absolutely no fall off or have an extreme amount of fall off here, so it's almost non-existent. I like to keep this around 0 0.5, 0 0.6-ish. So with our blob tool selected, let me actually just go out of this here so I can actually just be in object mode and see this a little bit easier. Let's just kind of fill up this area here so we kind of just have this erosion blending in a little bit better with our cliffside. Oftentimes when I'm doing this, this kind of just serves somewhat as a reference for me. I will be filling in some of these with rocks and things like that. But I do want kind of some sand and things to kind of serve as a general base for me to build off of here. So I've got this kind of initial build here looking pretty good. Let's add a little bit more sand back in here, kind of fill in these pockets up a bit more, really blobbed it up. And you might see this kind of deforming down like what I just did there. I'm just actually hitting shift on my keyboard as I'm moving over, which allows me to smooth as I'm moving through. And I kind of do this selectively as I'm kind of building up my scene, scaling things up and kind of smoothing it down to kind of blend it in a little bit so it has a nicer fall off to it so it's not a super big blob on the screen here. There's a lot of great brushes and things, so I encourage you to kind of play around with Blender and see which brushes you gravitate towards. I've got a couple of rock ones and stuff that I use too, um, in addition to kind of some of the main ones. So sometimes you can use just a clay thumb or something like that too, um, or you know different crease tools to kind of add a little bit more of a pocket to something, sharpen an edge. Um, so I encourage you to play around with these. And there's a lot of add-ons, a lot of different brushes that people have developed that look really great uh, for specific use cases. I made a number of videos on how to use these in other tutorials before too. Uh, but they're really fun. Um, so just the tools are, are a lot easier to use here in Blender to really get a good initial base. So this really isn't a modeling tutorial, so I'm kind of just broad strokes going through this here just to kind of give you an idea of what this would look like. I mainly wanted to show you how I'm staging this scene uh, for export as a USD file format over to Unreal Engine. So I think this is pretty good. And what I'm trying to do with this scene here in Blender is get it to maybe about like a 75% to where I want to be. I'm going to shade this smooth. Um, so you can see what we're working with. I'm trying to get this to like maybe about 75% of the way along and then the last little details of things we can add over in Unreal Engine. But you can see what I just did there. So that's already looking pretty great. Let me just add in a material for this and just to keep things simple, let's use this add-on called Blender Kit. This is free. Uh, you can actually download this on, uh, it used to come with Blender. Now it's on their separate uh, page, but um, over on Blender Kit. But let me just add in some sand here just for kind of a basic thing. It doesn't really matter. 
Um, we're probably going to be using a different texture eventually here, but you can see what this looks like. It blends in really nicely with our scene, and it kind of gives me a better idea of where this coastline is going to be, where the waves are going to be kind of lapping against this. And I can start to hit Alt and D to make link duplicates of these different rocks, kind of blend them in a little bit here with my scene so that there is not as many of these weird kind of sharp pockets and things like that in the scene. And again, this does not have to be perfect because I'm going to be kind of taking the last couple details over in Unreal Engine, but I just want to get this to somewhat of a close uh, finish. And I also, the back part of this, I'm not focusing on as much because I'm mainly just going to be seeing this front edge. This is something to be mindful of as you're making your scenes too, to spend less time designing particular regions that you realize you're not actually going to need. They're just not even going to factor in in any capacity in your final render. You can kind of breeze through them a bit quicker because they're not as important as some of the other main details of your scene. Like, for example, these main archways and things like that, that I know for fact are going to be nice central details of my final render. So let me just kind of, again, blend some more of these details in here. I'm just adding in some of these kind of macro rocks here into the scene. And this one I realize is kind of extending over a little bit on the bottom, which is not a big deal because, again, this is going to be clipping through the bottom of that ocean in our other scenes, so it doesn't really matter too much. But if you're going for a little bit more detail and you kind of have to make these things blend a bit better, take your time, uh, you know, just really play around with it and make sure that you're getting something that you want and that will look good. But for me, again, not critical that some of these details are perfect. So I'm just kind of staging everything here in Blender. Once again, moving stuff around, kind of finding those weird pockets of, you know, where materials are maybe missing or where there's kind of large gaps. I always kind of like having this little pocket of sand in the middle of this fort. It looks kind of cool as if this is just eroded. And then over time, sand is kind of piled up in those edges there uh, to kind of build out that really cool part of the scene. Let's add a couple more of these maybe on this back edge here just to kind of smooth out this weirdness over here. I can kind of add this around there a bit. This is looking good. And again, this back part I don't care about as much because I'm mainly going to just be seeing the front of the sandcastle. Uh, let's add maybe one more of these over here. And this should get us pretty close to a final state for where we want to be with this. And this will be ready to export over as a USD to Unreal Engine. So this is looking pretty cool. Um, let me actually add in some kind of column or some detail here potentially. Actually, maybe not. This, this looks pretty cool. Maybe add in one more of these over here or something like that. Just add one more of these little guys. Ah, never mind. Okay, so this is looking pretty cool. So this is all ready to go over to Unreal Engine. And again, be mindful when you're naming things so that they're easy to find as you go elsewhere. So this is Moss, Mossy Outcrop. Um, let's actually add in some lighting to kind of target things a little bit for Unreal Engine. So I'm actually going to just remove this HDRI for now because I'm not going to need it uh, over in Unreal. And instead, I want to actually set up some lighting here. And this will show you how this will work once we actually get over to Unreal Engine 2. Let me make a new collection over here. I'm going to call this uh, lighting. And I'm just going to give it a little label of like a yellow here for, you know, a nice light bulb. I'm going to add in a point light and let's bring this up into this little archway here. I'm going to go to top down view by hitting seven on my numpad. I just want to get this directly underneath this archway here because I'm really trying to draw your eye into that particular thing. And let's go over to the light settings and increase that radius quite a bit. Make it like a little bit more orangish glow and then add in a nice uh, little thing there. It looks pretty good. Let me turn this light down a bit here so you don't really see this as much. Just turn this to almost nothing and just see how this light affects. So let me crank that brightness up a bit here. So you see that archway is really nicely accentuated now. Let's actually duplicate this and bring it back to the second one back here since I want to draw your eye to that one and then also this one all the way back here. So you got this kind of nice path through the arch of our scene. So this is looking pretty cool. cool. I'm going to add in some additional lighting once we're over in Unreal Engine, but I want to have these as kind of my base for where I want to place lights. I might not end up using these ones from Blender, but I can actually export these along. If you remember, if I go over to File, Export, and USD, you can actually export the lights with your scene as well. So if I check that on, I can actually export these along with my scene. And let's actually just give this a proper name. So I'm going to call this Archway Beach Scene. And so we're going to actually export this out as USD. And in the next part, we're going to bring this over in Unreal Engine and start playing around. So I'll see you over there.